Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika and today I'm going to be talking to you about some new makeup releases. So in June, lots of new brands, uh, re lots of new brands, no, lots of brands announced some new products. Maybe there were new brands there. I don't think I have any new brands in the list today. And there wasn't a lot, but I think just enough to warrant making a video. So I thought I could come on here and share with you what I think of some new releases that have happened or that are about to happen. I think most of what I have selected is already out. And let me just preface this video by saying that I'm actually not interested in, interested in getting any of it. <laughs> Let me just be very short and sweet. So this video is mainly going to focus on why I w won't get any of it and uh, let's just talk about that for a minute. And if you would like to join the conversation that I'm very curious what you think of these products and whether you plan on picking anything up. So Kiko came out with their summer collection. They do a summer collection every single year. And this is, this is one of those things where I'm always intrigued. Kiko does some really really nice products. It seems to have bronzer, blush, and highlighter, as well as some other things. And especially those complexion products really intrigue me. It's just that I've owned Kiko products in the past that were limited edition, and then I never ended up using them because they were never 100% right for what I like. And I would like to elaborate a little bit on that because we have a Kiko store here in my town and I always go in to see what they have and Kiko is one of those brands that really has a couple of just products where they nailed it. Like they are super duper great products. Uh, I have a blush by them called the shade Fusion Blush. I think those were discontinued. They have a really stunning uh, highlighter that is in a similar packaging as the blush. I think it's also called like the shade Fusion Highlighter stunning as well. I really like their eyeshadow sticks. But then a lot of the other products, whenever I check them out in store, I'm always a bit like, hmm, not so sure. I will go in there, I will swatch them, I will be umming and ahhing about it, and then in the end, I never pick it up. And the reason why I don't is because, as I mentioned, very often the shades don't really appeal to me in the end. And Kiko is one of those brands that just insists on putting loads and loads of shimmer into their product. And here's what they do. In their stores, they have a lot of this like super bright overhead lighting that makes the products just look and feel much better than when you get them home. And I always feel that that's a little bit of a scam. Um, I think there are also other beauty stores that do that actually, where they have certain lighting that makes the product just look extra sparkly. And Kiko is one of the brands that I just feel does that the most. And I'm always a little bit like against that. Like whenever I go into a Kiko store, I always make a trip like, like two or three trips just to go outside, just to see what the product looks like in natural lighting. And that's of course what, like unless you are someone who uses makeup in like this, high def kind of photography photography kind of situation that's when you will sh see products like that but i don't need to look like a glimmering disco ball at work like i just don't so that's why kiko's products they always look stunning and their packaging is really incredible too it's usually a bit bit uh, big and bulky the shades aren't always the best for my tastes personally and that's why i'm going to be passing up on these kiko products ColourPop, everybody's been using this. I'm not even sure what the full collection is called. The tie-dye collection, it seems. Um, some people have been picking these up left and right, and I'm like, really? <laughs> like, that was the first thing I thought when I saw these. I think I have uh, a lots of singles by ColourPop that can actually do the same thing. So that's why I'm like, I really don't need these. Like I already have some Huda Beauty palettes that perhaps could tie in with this sort of situation. I have a bunch of the ColourPop monochromatic palettes already that I feel can do something similarly combined with my ColourPop singles. I, I can create these color stories myself. So I feel I don't need these. The only thing I'm still waiting for ColourPop is to restock the Flutterby palette. They've now restocked the Going Coconuts and the Making Mobs. 
but I also would like to get the flutter by, so I'm sort of like checking the website ever so often to see if that palette is now back in stock because it's taking ColourPop a hot minute to restock their website and that's one of the reasons why I haven't bought anything from them for some time. In fact, there is a huge issue with stock and shipping uh, from abroad at the moment. Um, so that's a, a, just been a really big limitation because of the virus and everything that's happening. It just makes it harder to get product, so. Essence has come out with a Honey limited edition collection. And when I first looked at this, I was like, ooh, that looks interesting. But these products already came to Cosmetic for Less, so that's a German website that ships internationally, and they get a lot of the limited edition uh, Essence and Catrice stuff that we don't get. This collection apparently isn't going to come to the Netherlands, um, and then I looked at it more closely, looking at the products online, I was like, no. Like, the eyeshadow palette is a bit bland. Um, I think it has a bronzer that I think would, you know, that's something I could get down with, but really, I don't think, it's not really something that I feel I need. Um, this just launched, this is the Lethal Cosmetics After Dark Collection, and they've come out with I think 12 new eyeshadows, it's sort of like 90s inspired, but it also comes with a bunch of gel liner kind of stuff. Um, I'm not a huge gel liner fan, I have to say. Uh, I have a couple from way back in the day, uh, but I, to be quite fair, I never really use it. Um, those eyeshadows, if I'm like, I still have to try the second palette I build with Lethal Cosmetics, so I first want to you know, make sure I use that and create some looks with that and then I'm allowed to look into buying some more by the brand. This does seem to feature a couple of really pretty shades, but I, I really want Lethal Cosmetics to do some cool tone neutrals. And I don't think I'll be buying from them until they start doing that. Bold statement right there. Um, some more bright stuff then, um, Makeup Revolution has come out with the Neon Dreaming eyeshadow palettes. These are clear dupes, or at least a different take on the Huda Beauty Neon Obsessions kind of palettes that she came out with. And these look nice, it's just we all know how I feel about Makeup Revolution eyeshadow quality by now. It's decent, it's workable, it's okay, but I don't know why. These color stories just don't really speak to me. I don't find them very neon, to be quite honest, either. Um, there seems to be only like one true bright shade in each one of these. The green and the pink one, I could still get down with. Like, if I were to see those in real life and they look okay, but then does it really add anything to what I already have going on? I don't think so. Um, then a brand that I spotted at Sephora when I was in the US, but I hadn't heard a lot of people talking about it, but now more people seem to. It's Patrick Ta's makeup line, and he's coming out with some new lipsticks, as well as a blush duo that comes with a cream and a powder. And to be quite honest, those blush duos kind of speak to me, but... You know, this is a brand that's going to be very hard to find because I think it's only like Sephora US only. I don't think we can get this in, in Europe yet. And, you know, the shades of the lipsticks are okay, but nothing to write home about. But it has this like pinky blush shade. I believe it's called She's That Girl. That looks really pretty. But do I really need more blush? I don't think so. Then Natasha Denona dropped the bronze palette or like it was a full collection, I think, also with a face palette and all that. And it's bronzes and golds and some reds. Um, no, <laughs> just no. If there's one palette that could have come out that is ex exactly the opposite of the kind of color story that I like, it would be the bronze palette. <laughs> Like, I just don't like bronzes and golds on me all that much. Like, it has a couple of, like, that dark brown and also this, like, grayish purpley tone in the top left, uh, top right corner. Those look stunning, but the rest of the palette, I'm like, I would never use that. And Natasha Denona, she, she's not that, that cheap, so not something I could just, like, buy on a whim to try it. Then Morphe and Coca-Cola have come out with a joint collection, 
And this this was one of those things I was like, who, why, why, why are we getting a Coca Cola collection? Like I I really don't get it. Um, and then with Morphe, it has a couple of reds in the palette that your eye is drawn into, but then it also has those like tin foil kind of aluminum kind of shades that I think are reminiscent of the canned packaging that Coca-Cola comes in. Um, so I like those four shades, but the rest of the palette just doesn't appeal to me. And the other products that are in this collection, I mean, no, N no, just not, no. Uh, Nabla has come out with some new stuff as well. Uh, the first thing I would like to talk about is their Miami, Miami Lights Glitter Palette. And I don't get the white, I don't get the red, and I don't get that deep shade. The only one I really like is that like plummy blue shade that it has. That looks stunning. I would buy that as a single, perhaps, at some point. But this entire palette, like, with three shades that I know I will never use, no can do. KVD Beauty, it's no longer Kat Von D, of course, uh, has come out, or is about to come out, with the Shake Primer. And this is a new eyeshadow primer, and it sounds very intriguing, because it's apparently clear. Like, wait, 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 wait. A clear, invisible eyeshadow primer to give every single eyeshadow true to pan color payoff. I don't know about you, but I'm intrigued. I'm definitely intrigued. Again, difficult to get because Kat Von D is not for sale where I live, but maybe at some point in time that could be something. If the reviews are good on that, I might definitely pick that up, but not anytime soon, not anytime soon. Uh, Mac is coming out with some new stuff as well, a new extra dimension skin finish called Underground, which is like a, well, in some lights it looks like a pastel rainbow and in another one it doesn't, it, I don't know. This product just confuses me. I just, I don't know why, like I've tried some of the unicorn rainbow highlighters in the past and to be quite honest, I found it very difficult to pick up a shade that was wearable and every single time it looked differently that when you applied it. Nah. And then uh, MAC Fix Plus has had a makeover and it now comes in lots of different scents. You know how I feel about scented makeup. <laughs> ah, so I will just buy a mini of the regular Fix Plus when uh, my Fix Plus finally runs out. It still hasn't. So um, yeah, no, this is, uh, I think it comes in like strawberry and... No. The colors are fun. I think the, co like, the colors are fun, but no. Um, and then the other half of that Nabla co uh, collection that I just talked about are, I think, I'm not sure, are, are they bronzers or are they also, yeah, it's bronzers and two new highlighters, I believe. So it's part of their skin glazing line and that skin glazing, glazing highlighter that I have, I think it's in the shade Privilege, it's stunning. So those bronzers, if the lightest one is light enough and not too orange, I might be interested in that because it has this like gel to powder texture, but the rest of this collection, no. Maybe the bronzer, maybe. But I have so many bronzers right now that I like that maybe I should first hit pan on some first and then buy a new one. Because else it gets a bit, a bit excessive. Uh, Blush Tribe is being rebranded this coming month, hopefully, uh, into, I'm um, hope hoping this, uh, I pronounce this correctly, uh, Miali or Miali Blue Beauty. Um, and they are now sneak peeking uh, different palettes up on their Instagram. And the one that spoke to me the most is the Yaya palette. Just, just look at the picture. And if you know a little bit what I like, then you understand. It seems to have like a teal, some cool tones, but it also has a bit of warmth. And I'm not so sure about that bit of warmth. So, so far, none of the palettes that were teased really appealed to me. So, um, this is the best one, I think, because I sort of, it's giving me very earthy kind of fall vibes. So it might be something I want to try just to see if the color story or, and, the, and the quality is still like Blush Tripe was because they did have some nice quality. But this is the kind of palette where I'm like, I wouldn't use half of it. 
I just wouldn't. Then Melt Cosmetics, she's in parties. I already said it before, I'm saying it again, Melt is simply redoing all of their stacks into palettes and they're probably going to get rid of their stacks, that's what I think. The She's in Party stack is one that I own, so I don't need this. I really, really don't need this because I already have four of these, no five. She's in Parties is five, sh five shades. And this comes with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shades. So that means I already have five out of eight. I don't need it. And then this I just found the other day, ColourPop is releasing a foundation, the Pretty Fresh Foundation. I have the tinted moisturizer, which I like so-so. Uh, I still need to try it a little bit more, but their no filter foundation I liked okay enough. But since I have dry skin, I think this may be much, much better for me. It's launching this July, so this could be, if I place a ColourPop order, then I might just chuck this in to see if it works for me. Then again, ColourPop complexion products, that no filter concealer, uh-uh, didn't work for me. So ColourPop and complexion products have been quite hit and miss, so that's why I'm a bit, uh but this may be something I'd be interested in trying at some point, but not straight away. Um, then I found that Alien Cosmetics is coming out with the Fairy Frolic palette. And this, this intrigues me. It's just that Alien Cosmetics is one of those brands that's quite hard to get if you're not in the US. So um, it's just one of those products where I'm like, looks pretty, but what's your shipping like? And I think I already looked into it, and this is one of those brands where shipping was quite expensive to Europe, so not gonna happen. And then finally, I wanna talk about a new release from Makeup Geek, another brand that is very difficult to get if you're in Europe. They used to be for sale on Beauty Bay, but ever since they redid their line, they have disappeared from there, and there is now no way to get it without having to pay for customs. And they're coming out with some pastels in their Soft Focus collection, this looks pretty, but is it just me or has Makeup Geek become very boring? I just, I, I don't know. Is that a controversial opinion? I'm not sure. They used to do all these fun shimmers and now they're coming out with just bunches of mattes. That's the only thing I've, the only thing I've seen people promoting since they redid their line is mattes. And I've heard that that was a deliberate choice to first get the mattes out and then do other things. But I'm just, I'm just waiting for shimmers. Like, give, give me shimmer. Like, that was the, that's, those are the, fa my favorite shades by Makeup Geek are my, uh, what, what are they called? The foils and the duochromes. Those are my favorite shades by Makeup Geek. Stop making all these mattes. Give me, give me something more fun. Please, Makeup Geek. We can do it. So as I mentioned, short and sweet, because usually these videos run for much longer than <laughs> I have talked for right now. There just wasn't a lot that really sort of spoke to me where I was like, ooh, I need to mention that. There's a lot more that's been announced, but I'm like, I'm scrolling through Instagram, I'm like, nah, nah. And I've actually been feeling like that for a few months now. And I'm like, maybe I'm just becoming a little desensitized with the sheer amount of uh, releases that are out there, who knows. Um, I do have a nice makeup wish list, so maybe it's also because of that that I'm first focusing on making sure I get some of the products that are on my wish list, and then towards the end of the year, I'm pretty sure I'll find some more products that I wanna put on my wish list, and then I might decide that I wanna get stuff. But for now, it's all just a little lackluster. I think top of the list for me would be probably that Nabla bronzer. Like That's the only thing that really stands out to me, and everything else I'm like, nah, could do without it just as easily, so. That's, um, that's my take on this month's new makeup releases. Thank you very much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week, so I hope to see you in my next video. Stay safe, everybody. Bye-bye.